today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Ignorance breeds fear. To teach soldiers of the United States Army exactly what atomic weapons can and cannot do, and thereby allay any unreasonable fears of the A-bomb, a series of atomic experiments have been held in the barren lands of Nevada during the past several years. Today's big picture deals with the latest and most extensive of these experiments, Desert Rock 6. In the spring of 1945, victory in Europe terminated a slow, painful war in the old world. Then only weeks later, the centuries-old concepts of war were changed in a blinding instant. Here at Hiroshima was felt the awful impact of man's new mightiest weapon, the A-bomb. Accompanying the blast were searing heat and atomic radiation, a word in effect new to most of the world's population. In the ensuing years, both the lethal power of the atom and the means of delivering it were improved. Then came atomic artillery. Research and development in several areas promise more powerful warheads, longer reaching weapons, and simultaneously reduce the defender's chance against them. Today, no one has a greater interest or a greater stake in the development and the use of atomic firepower than the American soldier. Would the ground soldier become obsolete was a question asked immediately by civilian and military alike. To answer the question and to explore its ramifications, the U.S. Army set up an atomic experiment station at Camp Desert Rock, Nevada. By winter of 1954-55, 31 different atomic devices had been tested. January of 1955, another series of test explosions is scheduled. Instructors are prepared to answer the questions uppermost in the minds of every participant. You are here to participate in an atomic maneuver. Atomic weapons are truly powerful, but they don't mean the end of all life as so many people think. You can live through an atomic attack, and by taking common sense precautions, live to fight another day. This is not a haphazard maneuver. Careful planning for it started months back, involving activity not only here in Nevada, but also in New Mexico and wherever your home stations are. The planning mentioned by the instructor involves the movement of infantry and armored units. Here officers are seen setting up an assumed tactical situation to be presented later to the commanding general of Desert Rock for approval. The plan supposes that an aggressor has seized the west coast of the United States, but our troops have finally stopped him right along this position, ground zero. Here, the atomic weapon will be used. Next, our troops will attack and seize the target area. Immediately, the plans are approved. Army engineers go to work. Across the monotonous terrain of Frenchman's Flat, they set up their transits and begin to lay out the exercise area.
A few miles away lies a sandy parcel of land called Ground Zero. No longer an anonymous, desolate stretch of land, Ground Zero is level, then topped with a series of concentric asphalt circles, forming an enormous target. Nearby, Signal Corps men lay communication lines to receive and transmit telephone and teletype messages. At the same time, the enormous task of excavating entrenchments for participating soldiers is underway. A mechanical ditch digger does the initial digging, gouging out trenches and foxholes. Next, the men who will occupy the positions during the blast finish the entrenchments by adding sandbag reinforcement. Don't worry, men. I tried on those foxholes for size myself, many times. They'll be big enough and safe enough to hold two infantry soldiers. 